Part 5 of Chapter 11 deals with identifying risks. Identifying risks is the process of understanding what potential events might hurt or enhance a particular project. Uh, some of the risk identification tools and techniques include such uh, group brainstorming or thinking technique as brainstorming, the Delphi technique, interviewing, and SWOT analysis. And we will talk about each of those popular techniques in more detail in a few minutes. Now, brainstorming is probably by far the most common, the most popular technique for generating uh, all kinds of ideas from a group, including ideas or predictions in, rela in relation to project risk. So brainstorming is a technique by which a group of attempts, uh, usually it's a group of experts or a group of people that are somehow knowledgeable or related to a particular project. So, so this group attempts to generate ideas or find a solution for a specific problem by amassing ideas spontaneously and without judgment. So uh, one, one of the ideas of brainstorming is that no idea is stupid, everybody should feel free to brainstorm, meaning to generate ideas, regardless of whether those ideas seem to be good or bad, you know, likely or unlikely, uh, realistic or completely bizarre and unrealistic. Uh, usually brainstorming sessions where a group of people are brainstorming about the future or anything else uh, is led by an experienced fac facilitator. And one of the one of the things some of the things that this facilitator should do is to make sure there's a free exchange of ideas that nobody dominates the discussion that nobody criticizes ideas before it's time and things like that. Uh, by the way, brainstorming is uh, is actually an elaborate technique. I mean, the, the essence of brainstorming is, is this. Uh, a group of people get together and they generate ideas. But there are many specific protocols, values, rules, and ideas that are practiced as a part of brainstorming. So it's not a sim sometimes it's not a simple technique. It's a very elaborate procedure designed to generate quality ideas and protect creativity of individual, uh, protect and stimulate creativity of individual mem members. Now, brainstorming seems to be like a natural, intuitive, and easy technique to start with, but you need to be aware of the limitations of brainstorming so that this technique is, is, is not misused. For example, it, it's a well-known fact in psychology research that individuals produce a greater number of ideas, or at least some individuals produce a greater number of ideas and better ideas while working alone than they do through brainstorming in a small face-to-face -face group. The reason for this is that group effects often inhibit idea generation. Um, sometimes individuals are too shy to share their ideas with the group in general. Sometimes they're not shy to share their ideas, but once they see, once they hear uh, other people's ideas, they may be very reluctant to propose an idea that is contradictory to what the group thinks seems to converge on. So brainstorming is not always effective in soliciting good creative ideas from individuals as a part of a group. Now, to address some of the shortfalls of the brainstorming uh, method, uh, the so-called Delphi technique was created. Uh, Delphi technique is used to drive a consensus among a panel of experts who make predictions about future development. Uh, one of the features of Delphi technique is that, uh, unlike, unlike brainstorming session, uh, there is a mechanism where the, uh, the idea generation is anonymous, at least to some point. So typically uh, what it's done is that people use a computerized system or simply notes to write down their ideas and they don't uh, voice their ideas to everyone else in the group. Then the facilitator would combine all those ideas in, in, into a comprehensive list so that everybody's ideas are included and then show the list of ideas to everybody. And then uh, people will, uh, uh, you know, people comprising this group uh, participating in the Delphi exercise they would vote on the importance or relevance of ideas, and then based on that, uh, a ranking will be created. Also, during this uh, procedure, they can generate another set of ideas. So Delphi technique uses rounds, so it's like iterative manner. So they use rounds of questioning and written responses uh, to, you know, continue to uh, expand the list of ideas and refine the list of ideas through several rounds of interaction. Again, Delphi technique, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a simple procedure. There are a lot of rules. There are a lot of roles used uh, as a part of this uh, exercise. Sometimes, as I mentioned, computerized systems are used to capture, rank, and display uh, ideas generated through a Delphi brainstorming exercise. And also, I've seen many variants, like many extensions of the Delphi technique used for different purposes, different scenarios, different industries, and different problem areas. 
So it's a big topic. I mean, you may want to read about the Delphi technique in detail if you're interested in this. Now, interviewing is another fact-finding technique. Uh, I think everybody knows what interviewing means. So it typically means asking people face-to-face -face or a phone or email or instant messaging regarding their ideas. And uh, uh, so, yeah, you just, you just approach people and you ask them about what they see as a potential risk in relation to a particular project. Interviews can be done individually. Uh, they can be done in a group where it's more like a focus group interview where you ask the same question to a group of people and then you record everyone's uh, response. Uh, now, of course, naturally, you, you need to interview people who have uh, relevant project experience, uh, although sometimes talking to people who are outsiders is worthwhile uh, as well because they may give you ideas that are uh, sort of out, uh, outside of the box. Right, because people with similar experience, they also se seem to converge on similar ideas. Uh, another technique for generating ideas in relation to risk is SWOT analysis. Uh, SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And uh, SWOT analysis is typically performed as a part of a strategic management process where a company gets together to decide on the strategic opportunities and threats in front of the company also strength and weaknesses that may help the company pursue opportunities or neutralize threats or weaknesses uh, that make uh, the pursuit of opportunities problematic or which, which uh, weaknesses that widen threats in front of the company so as a part of the SWOT analysis you will generate some ideas about uh, threats and weaknesses and uh, you know those can be translated you, you know your weaknesses and threats in front of the company can be translated into the broad negative and positive risk that apply to a project. Yeah, so if we're talking about positive uh, positive events, you know, then those can be derived from uh, uh, strength uh, and also opportunities. So that can be done using uh, uh, SWOT and uh, SWOT framework. Um, again, something that is done as a part of the strategic management process. Now, regardless of which brainstorming, which idea generation technique that you use, uh, the main output of the risk identification process is a list of identified risks and other information uh, related to those risks. And all this information is needed to, be to begin uh, creating a risk uh, register. So that's the, the most important ultimate output or ultimate document for, uh, uh, that is a part of the risk identification process. So what is a risk register? Uh, it's a document that contains the results of various risk management processes and is often displayed in, in the form of a table or a spreadsheet. Uh, it's a tool for documenting potential risks events and information related to those potential risks, risk events, both positive and negative. So yeah, risk events in general refer to specific and certain events that may occur to the, to, uh, to the detriment or enhancement of the project. So yeah, it can, uh, by risk events, we mean both positive and negative e events. So some of the uh, information that can be included in your risk register uh, is as follows. Uh, first of all, an ID number for each risk event that you have identified, a rank for each risk event, meaning how important that risk event is perceived to be or determined to be, the name of each risk event, the description of each risk event, in case somebody does not understand the nature of that risk from the name, he or she can read the description. Uh, the category under which each risk event falls, you know, that can come from your risk breakdown structure. So all of your risks uh, or risk events will be grouped into a category. The root cause of each risk, meaning the most important factor behind that risk. Uh, triggers for each risk. Triggers are uh, causes, indicators, or symptoms of actual risk events. Uh, sometimes the risk itself can be too fuzzy, too subjective, for example, lack of employee cooperation. But some triggers or cooperation can be more specific, more measurable, such as, let's say, uh, one event would be like no meeting scheduled for, for, uh, for the duration uh, of, of uh, let's say, one month. That could be an indicator or trigger of the fact that there is poor cooperation from the side of users or employees uh, on a particular project. Uh, also an important part of, of a risk register is poten uh, our potential responses to each risk. Also the risk owners, uh, meaning uh, people who are ultimately responsible uh, for addressing uh, uh, the risk identified. Also you may want to include the probability and impact of each risk occurring and also the status of each risk. Has it been, has it occurred? Is it being dealt with? You know, has it, uh, has it been properly addressed and so forth? 
So all in all, it can look like a table where you have uh, IDs for each risk, then rank, uh, then uh, a risk name, description, category, root cause, triggers, uh, potential responses, uh, risk owners, probability, impact, and status of each of the risks uh, that, that is listed uh, in your risk register.